I want you to at least have enough time to get to this question. Um, all right, so let me um, read the question and uh, diagram the situation and go through the solution, same as the first two questions. So it says a basketball player shoots towards a basket six, some distance away and some height above the floor. I'm going to assume that this is distance given is um, distance away uh, horizontally only. Because otherwise it looks super difficult. <laughs> distance away and height above the floor. If the ball is released 1.8 meter above the floor, okay, uh, at an angle of some angle above the horizontal, what must the initial speed be if it were to go through the basket? Um, all right, let me draw the picture to make sure I got all the information, well, correctly for one. Um, so, um, I guess I will start by drawing the basket. So here's the basket. It has some height that's specified from in the question. Uh, I don't know why I'm doing the dots. It's, that's actually hard. <laughs> um, it's harder to do it straight. Um, so it's some height. And I need to imagine a basketball player at some distance away. And this distance is what's given in the question. Distance away and at some height above the floor. Um, the basketball is released as um, another height above the floor. And um, the question gives us an angle at which it's uh, launched. Data. And it's asking for the initial speed V0. Hmm. All right, um, I guess uh, what I have to assume is that, so, you know, this is some of, sometimes um, you have to know about approximations and simplifications to make, to make a physics problem solvable. So in real life, if you are playing basketball in real life, um, not every ball that goes through the hoop actually goes through the hoop. It could be hitting the rim. It has to come in at the correct angle and whatnot. But um, I think if we have to worry about at what angle the ball is coming in to the hoop, then it, this problem becomes unsolvable. So what I'm going to do to make the problem simpler so that I can actually solve it is to say, if the trajectory of the ball is such that, that it crosses the loop, then that's all we need to say that the ball goes in. So, um, so you can imagine a, a series of different trajectories with all these specified parameters, where the only thing different is how fast the initial speed is. So depending on that initial speed, the ball could be going through these many different trajectories. And I'm basically find, looking for one where the initial speed is just right so that the ball goes through the hoop and doesn't go beyond, doesn't fall short. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so um, so I'm going to start by um, start by setting up the axis, x and y component of the um, uh, motion, and I hope that this question uh, might leave you a little bit um, at a loss or, uh, as to what to do at this point. Um, it's asking for initial speed, and I'm not quite sure how that ties into any of this. Um, so this is where um, it helps to lay out the mathematical relationships. Then you might be able to see how, um, what steps to take from there to get to the answer. So I have this one point on the trajectory that I'm going to be calling on later. So the x final, y final, 
um, or I maybe I should have called it one and two. Uh, yeah, let me actually relabel it one and two. So x or just one, x one y one. This is one point on the trajectory, and I happen to know that point. That point is given in the question as having horizontal position of D and the vertical position of H. So I'm going to be using that information. That's one of the points on the trajectory. And, oh, and I guess this point here, um, I have X equals zero and Y equals H. That's another point on the trajectory. And um, so let me just start by writing out the kinematics equations. So this time I'm going to write down both X and Y uh, portion, Y components. So kinematics equations, they look like the X component will just say X position is equal to initial X position, which I set it to be zero. Oh, so this is also T equals zero. Um, is uh, the, the x component of initial velocity times time, uh, that's x, and the y uh, portion of the kinematics equation says the y position is equal to the initial um, y position, that's height h, so height plus initial y velocity, doing at y, times time and plus one half acceleration times squared. Um, so acceleration is um, downward at minus g. So let me write the equation that reflects that. Minus one half g t squared. Um, all right, I think I can do a couple more steps. To, so that it doesn't look like there's more unknowns than there actually are. I can take this vector V naught and decompose it into X and the Y component. And this is the triangle I'm drawing. The Y component that's opposite to the angle you are given. So this is V naught sine theta. And the X component will be V naught cosine theta. So let me write that in so that it doesn't look like I have two unknowns x and y component of initial velocity, I only have one unknown. Um, v naught cosine theta times time. Um, and let me write this one out. Uh, h plus v naught sine theta t minus one half g t squared. And it's a good practice to get into when it looks like you are stuck in a question to count your equations and count your unknowns. So here I have two equations, one, two. And you will see that I have too many unknowns. I have X, um, as it's, uh, but in general terms, it's a variable, so X is unknown and y is also unknown. Uh, t is a variable, so it's unknown. Uh, v naught is unknown, because that's what we are looking for. And this theta is known. But, uh, so we have two equations and four unknowns. And that's usually an indication that you have some information that in the question, given in the question that you should use that you haven't used. And here the equation, now, the information that I haven't used is this. This fact that this is a point on the trajectory. So not using this information forced me to treat X and Y as an unknown, and they don't have to be. I can be dealing with one particular moment in time, T1, which is still going to be unknown, but um, using this information, I can reduce my number of unknowns. And let's see where we are after that. So using that information, well, yeah, using the information I highlighted. So the X position, I'm looking at a particular moment in time at time T1. So the X position is D at time T1 is equal to V naught cosine theta T1. 
And the y position is now h is equal to h uh, plus v naught sine theta t1. It's the same time at which the, um, the ball reaches that horizontal and vertical position minus one half g t1 squared. So now I have one, two equations. Let me get rid of the previous equation labels. And uh, let's see how many unknowns we have. Uh, D is known, V naught is unknown, and T1 is technically unknown. I'm not given the time at which the ball makes it into the basket. And looking at equation two, H is known, both H's are known, V naught, it is unknown, but I already counted it. T1 is unknown, but I already counted it. Ah, so I can see that here I have two unknowns. And two equations. So once you reach this point, then you know that you are done with the physics part, which is going through the given information to figure out how to solve the question. And uh, all that remains is math, um, which, you know, it's not to say it's uh, easy or trivial. Um, here, I think we are going to have to use um, quadratic formula. So it's going to take a bit of a work, but it is doable. Uh, since I'm a bit out of, well, I am out of time, let me just sketch what steps you need to go through. So I, so a lot of physics problem solving, the math portion um, uh, comes down to solving a system of equations. And one method I really like to the point of maybe overusing it a little bit is the substitution method. So what I would do is solve this for T1. Oops. Solve this for T1 so that you have some expression. T1 is equal to, oh, I guess that's easy enough to do. So let me do that. T divided by V naught cosine theta. And what this becomes is a tool for me to use to get rid of any, um, any other instances of, to get rid of any other instances of T1 in the remaining equations. So I can plug this in to get rid of all the T1s. Then I will have um, a, one equation with a single unknown V0 to solve. So um, I think when you plug it in, oh, it's simpler than I thought. I think you do end up with a relatively simple equation involving only one term of a V0 squared. So I think you can solve it pretty easily. So, um, so so this is the substitute meth, uh, substitution method. You substitute this into other equations. And the goal here is to eliminate T1. So for this question, the choice was relatively easy because um, 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 well, yeah, it was relatively easy. Uh, I guess we'll have a future uh, questions where the choice of which um, variable to first solve for might not be as clear. Um, I will then point out uh, the thought process you should work through to, um, to make the most efficient choice on which variable to eliminate. So that's, uh, I think, all the time we have. Um, I hope that this, these are enough of uh, examples of projectile problem solving to help you complete your homework due tonight. Um, I hope, to, well, uh, I'll see all of you in class on Tuesday and uh, until next time. Bye.